I think we can all agree that it's pretty satisfying to press a button on a controller and feel it like physically move compared to using a touchscreen device, which is not really that exciting because you're just sliding your finger on a piece of glass. Um, hello, ambulance. However, um, game feel, it's basically feel with game appended to it, and it also applies in other areas. So for example, in smartphones, have you noticed that when you type a message, uh, the letter that you pick uh, shows above your finger and the phone slightly vibrates and it makes a sound effect? All these make the act of typing a message way more uh, satisfying overall. And not only that, it's more satisfying, it's also functional because you no longer have to offset your view like from the keyboard to the actual message to see if your input registered. You already know it did because you heard the sound effect and you felt the phone vibrating. So it makes the whole act of sending an email so much more exciting. Um, I'm gonna show you some examples of game feel. I'm gonna show you what to do and what not to do. Now, this first example is from a uh, free online game I uh, found on YouTube. It's like a shooter or something, I don't even know the name of it, but it's an example of what not to do. Yeah. Uh, that's a bit awkward. Um, okay, so that's lack of feedback. You, you see when uh, the guy shoots the gun, there's no muzzle flash, that's only like a puff of smoke that lasts like three or four frames, and the sound, uh, the sound effect is quite weak, and you don't feel, uh, really feel like you're shooting a weapon, you feel like you're shooting a toy gun. Uh, also not to mention the number of shells he has in a pump action shotgun and how the enemy dies. Here's an example of good feedback. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> That's from uh, Bulletstorm, and what that guy is doing is shooting a flail gun. Now, what the flail gun is, is a gun with, that shoots two bombs strapped to each other, and they wrap around your enemy, and you can remotely detonate them. The idea alone is satisfying enough, but the way they um, implemented it, it's so much better, how you can see the bomb wrap, or, uh, the, per, sorry, the um, two bombs wrap around the enemy, and when you detonate them, you see like the guts and the gore fly over the screen, and it's so much satisfying. It's so awesome. Um, here's another quick example. This is me in uh, Skyrim, swinging my sword at the wall, and that's how the wall reacts as in it doesn't at all, and my sword goes right through the wall, which is not really immersive, because if you want to immerse yourself in a game and feel like you're fighting a bear on a mountain, you don't want to feel like you're slicing cheese. And on the other hand, this is chivalry, and this is what happens when you try to swing uh, your sword at a wall. It stops right there, and it gives a sense of environment and how real everything around you is, which is so much better. So the conclusion is that um, game feel is that type of thing that makes you say, this feels awesome, but I don't know why. <laughs> it's the thing that it's really obvious when it's not there, but not many people uh, notice it when it is there. So uh, I'm going to talk about game feel in Move or Die, how I made the death animation, and I'm going to go through that without using any like hand-drawn, frame-by-frame explosions or anything fancy like that. I'm gonna use only assets and programming. And I'm gonna go quite fast through these because I don't have much time. So, uh, before that, uh, the game is made in Love2D, uh, which runs on Lua, and uh, it also is bo uh, it uses Box2D as the physics engine. So, without further ado, let's make an awesome death animation. I'm gonna start from scratch. I'm gonna assume we don't have anything, so first of all, I'm gonna need movement, and I'm going to need a death condition. Uh, this is some basic movement code. Uh, you can find this anywhere if you're just getting into game development. I'm not here to focus on code. Uh, this is like the building blocks of game development. Uh, and here is some um, code for uh, the jumping. Uh, luckily for us, we have Box2D that takes care of gravity and all that, so we only apply a force on the character. And for the sake of the presentation, I'm gonna need a death condition, and I'm gonna say that when player's one feet touch player two's head, player two explodes. The funny thing is that I'm talking about video games, and I could show this with uh, images or videos, but that's not fun. Video games are interactive, so let's make this talk interactive. And I'm gonna need two people from the audience to play the game while I talk about it. <laughs> like I told you. So, who wants to try this? You, you can stay right there. Wireless controllers. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna need you two guys to do is whenever the game is on screen, you jump on each other's head. 
What I'm going to need everybody else to do is give them a round of applause anytime they do so to show our appreciation for them making this presentation work. So let's see if this works. Go. Awesome. Oh, you can keep doing it. <laughs> Come on, one more time. Cool. What what color are you? Like which is which? You're you're the yellow one and you're the blue one. Cool. But I'm gonna pause this because this is um whoops. This is not good enough. This sucks, right? The character just disappears when you jump on him and it, it isn't satisfying at all. So let's add some animations, right? I'm going to create some animations. I'm going to talk about a bit about uh, sprite sheets versus asset sheets and uh, exporting, packing, and implementing. So the first thing I do with my animations is I break up my character into all the individual assets. So I do that. Then I bring them into Adobe Flash, where I do all my animations, and I animate him there. Uh, in this case, there are like five animations there. Uh, idle one, run, jump, loop, and an explode one. And uh, then I have to implement them in the game. Now, I have to decide between um, sprite sheets and something else. I'm not a huge fan of sprite sheets because they're quite big in size, and they eat a lot of uh, resources, and they're not really flexible. So what I'm going to use is something I call asset sheets. Now, by the way, for those who don't know, a uh, sprite sheet is when you export each frame of an animation and pack them in a bigger image. Now, asset sheets, it's something similar, but instead of each frame, I export each individual asset and uh, put them in a bigger image. And then I export the animation separately uh, through a custom exporter that uh, exports all the data for all the assets for every frame. So this is an example that says that the right leg of the character uh, at frame 13, it has this x and this y coordinate, uh, coordinates, this scale x, this scale y, rotation, alpha, and whatever else. The beauty of this is that I can add and remove how many variables I want, and this is really awesome. For comparison, this is how the sprite sheet would look for those five animations I showed you, which is uh, 5700 by 3100 pixels, which is quite a big sprite sheet. And, um, on the other hand, this is my asset sheet, which is uh, 460 by 210, less than 1% the number of pixels in the sprite sheet. The awesome part about asset sheets is that they're small, they don't take uh, so, much, uh, so many resources, they're flexible, optimized, and um, it gives you individual control over uh, many variables. For example, if I would have wanted uh, to create a separate character that has a bigger right leg, I would have to export a whole separate uh, sprite sheet. But with asset sheets, I could just multiply his uh, right leg uh, scale through the code and have it run at real time. So it's awesome like that. Uh, and another really awesome thing is interpolation. I'm sure you've all seen games that use sprite sheets and uh, try to go into slow motion. And uh, when you do that, they basically um, increase the, s uh, the time each frame lasts on the screen. And that looks a bit choppy and not really awesome. But with asset sheets, you have the data for each frame. So you can create data where there is none. So you can make this really awesome interpolation and have very smooth slow motion like this, which is really handy to use if you want to make your game juicy. Cool. So um, next is implementation. Again, this is really easy. I just play the appropriate animation when the player presses either left or right and turn the character to face the appropriate direction. And time for a demo. Let's see. Awesome, we have animations. Cool, you're doing a great job, by the way. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to pause here and say that it's not good enough. Obviously, we only have animation, and it still sucks. So what do we add next? We add sound effects. Uh, I'm going to add sound effects for movement, for death, and for the environment. So uh, I get my sound effects from these sites. There are a lot of places you can get sound effects from uh, online. Some of them are free, some of them are not. Uh, but these are the ones I use. And I also use Audacity to edit my sound effects. I'm not sponsored by them. I just think it's a really awesome program, and it's also free. Uh, some tips for movement sound effects. It has to be subtle and there has to be a lot of variation. Now, uh, I am going to start with a jumping sound effect, which sounds like this. Cool, that sounds good, but uh, it's kind of annoying because it's the same sound. So first of all, I'm gonna make it subtle, so I'm gonna lower the volume. Better. 
but uh, I want to add variation. So what I could do is um, use multiple uh, files, but instead I'm going to simply uh, bend the pitch every time it plays. So it's way more awesome like this because I create uh, additional stuff without using um, uh, multiple files. I could add footsteps, but uh, in my case, there are four characters. They're really small, and they run uh, really fast. So that would be quite insane. Um, and I'm going to add a death sound effect. Now, for this one, I'm going to combine multiple sound effects, and I need a really satisfying end result. So first of all, I'm going to need a strong impact. Cool. I'm going to need a small impact. Awesome. And finally, a very satisfying squishy sound. Cool. Um, I'm going to combine all of them to make this sound effect, which sounds really awesome. And I have to really rush through this because I'm running out of time. <laughs> uh, I'm going to also add some sound effects for the environment because it's good to justify everything around you. And um, let's try the demo again to see how it sounds with sound effects. Go. It's already much better, especially when you die. Die once. There we go. Cool. <laughs> But you know what I'm going to say next? It's not good enough. So uh, I'm going to add something I call death paint. I need a, a way to reward your actions, a way to mark the death spot, and a way to tell who died and where. So I found these assets online, and uh, I'm going to simply spawn them whenever somebody dies and match their color to the player's color. But they look horrible. <laughs> so uh, what I'm going to do to make them look better is you make use of depth and render them behind everything except the background. So they already look better. However, I want to add them also on the ground. So what I'm going to do is uh, create an alpha mask by rendering all the tiles white on a black background and apply that on another layer of paint. Sorry for going so fast through this. And finally, we'll get uh, this result, which looks much better. And it's really awesome to see who you killed where, and they leave a mark right there. But before the demo, I'm going to add one more thing. I'm going to add paint particles, because particles are awesome. So I'm going to spawn a random number of particles. They're going to fly outwards. They're going to leave a little splatter on the ground wherever they touch the ground. So this is how they're going to look, which is so cool when you feel like you're making an impact when you kill somebody. Really quick, another demo. Let's see how it looks with splatters. Make a mess. Nice. Now, this is fun with only two players, but it gets way messier with four players, so there's that. Um, but obviously, obviously, it's not good enough. So I'm going to add some final touches. And uh, I'm not going to go into details for these ones, but I'm going to add screen shake, chromatic aberration, shockwave, and haptic feedback. So I'm going to add um, screen shake by changing the coordinates of the camera every frame. And this is a bit too much, so I'm going to tone that down. That looks much better. So much for screen shake. I'm going to add uh, chromatic aberrations. And for, uh, for those who don't know, it's when you split each color channel and offset them. And they create this effect, which is a bit exaggerated for the sake of the presentation. Uh, and uh, also a shockwave. This is another alpha mask of a simple circle that grows. And uh, I'm going to apply that as a displacement map on the game. And it looks like that. And finally, the controllers will vibrate. You won't be able to tell, but the two guys playing will be able to tell. So we'll go ask them after that. And the final demo to see how everything comes together. Awesome. Now, the awesome thing about all this is that you can tell when somebody dies somewhere else on the screen without having to look there. You simply see the screen shake and the chromatic aberration, and they all come together. Now, for the finale, I want to make this a bit more epic. So if you'll stop for a second, I need you to go in each, in each corner of the screen and stay there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a countdown, right? OK. I'm going to do a countdown. And when I say go, you'll run at each other and jump on each other's head. However, I'm going to make this a bit more epic. So I hope this works. You ready? Three, two, one, go. <laughs> go, go, go. Let him kill you! Let him kill you! Oh, this is this is so epic! Go, go, go! No, let him kill you! Let him kill you! <laughs> no, you'll ruin everything! Oh, this is gonna take so long! Oh, and and cool, go! Awesome, cool.
Thank you. This is good enough for now. Um, Sadly, I don't, I don't think I have any time to mention uh, the other things. There are a lot of things that you might have missed. However, uh, we can continue this discussion. You can find me uh, on uh, Facebook, on Twitter, Steam as Xelubest, on Skype and email for those of you who still use email. Uh, and again, Move or Die is currently in early access on Steam and you can also play it in the Indie Prize section. So come there and we can talk more about game feel and all that. And um, let's keep this discussion going. That was it. Thank you for having me. Thanks again, hope you enjoyed the presentation. Just anyway. Any question quickly? Nope. If you have any questions, you can find me at my booth and I'm gonna be around here because I might have run over time, so come to me and we'll talk about awesome games. I'm gonna need the controllers back, by the way. Thank you. <laughs>